Welcome to this iPrint introduction video. My name is Robin Redgrave. I'm a solutions consultant based out of the UK. First, let's just talk a little bit about where you get iPrint from and how it's delivered. iPrint is delivered in a number of ways. First of all, there's an appliance that you can implement. It's a virtual appliance. You just put it into your hypervisor and we support VMware, Hyper-V, Zen, Citrix Zen. And the other way you can get it is if you've got OES maintenance, then you've got an entitlement for iPrint Advance to run on your OES servers. Just be aware that it's not installed by default. The iPrint that's installed by default isn't the advanced version with the features I'm going through in this video. They both have more or less the same features. You've got self-service printer driver install. You obviously can print. You've got walk-up printing where you can print to a queue and then at a later stage release that to a, a printer. Oh, and by the way, with your OES maintenance, you're also allowed to run the iPrint appliance if you wish. Something bear in mind though, is that the OES maintenance uh, entitlement is only for desktop licenses. And talking about licenses, we have a number of different licenses available for iPrint. So you've got desktop licensing, which is for Windows, Mac, and we have a Chromebook version as well. We've got mobile licensing with iOS and Android, and you can just pull down the app from the relevant store to install on your device. And we do have enterprise licensing, which is effectively both desktop and mobile licensing as one license. So let's just talk a bit about self-service printer drivers. iPrint allows the end user to deliver printer drivers to their workstation without the need for any IT involvement whatsoever. So it makes IT's life quite a bit easier. The administrator can upload printer drivers into what's called a driver store and they can be uploaded for each platform that the user's running. So it could be a Mac, it could be Windows 16 bit, Windows 64 bit and so on. With each driver that's pulled down by the user, you can set up a driver profile. So these are the default settings, you know, default to duplex printing, to black and white printing and so on. So as the user installs a particular printer driver, a particular profile can be installed at the same time. And something that's quite nice is that if you update the printer driver in the driver store, then you can push down that updated driver to all the users that are using it. So as far as delivery is concerned, there are a number of ways that the user can uh, install a printer driver. Something that we use in-house is installing it through a map. So we have a map of the world. You can click on a country, a town, go into the floor plan. And then all you need to do is just click on a printer to install that particular printer driver. The other way that you can install printer drivers is through the iPrint portal. This is just a web-based portal that will list each printer that you've got and you can select the printer to install from there. Just something to bear in mind, if you're using this self-service printer driver installation, you do need to install the iPrint client. And effectively what that gives you is what I call traditional printing from an application. So when you go to the file print option uh, in Word, for instance, there. So let's just have a look at that. On a web page that I can hit with the map, and a floor plan. And indeed, I find this quite useful when I'm in a office I'm not familiar with. I can see on the floor plan where the printer is. Uh, in the past, I used to go have to go running around trying to work out where the printer was. With this, I can actually see where the printer is. Let's just install this printer here. So I just need to click on that. And I can set that as the default printer. I won't in this instance. And I'll just say I want to install it. Yes. And there we are, that's just been installed. The other way is from the iPrint portal where we can list printers. In this case, I've only got three that are 
publicly available. Let's just install this walk-up printer. So we'll talk a bit about walk-up printing later on, but effectively that lets me print to a queue and then at a later stage, select which printer that's going to print out on. Notice here that when I try to install that, it, it needs to know who I am when I print to that walk-up queue. So let me just log in here. And you'll notice that I can actually see a few more printers once it knows who I am because these are secured printers and only selected people have rights to print to them. So now if I click on that install option here, and indeed I do have install options for the other ones, so let's just install uh, this one. And I do want to install it. And there we are, that walk-up queue has now been installed as a printer on my workstation. So let's now just go through some of the print options that you've got of how a user can print. We mentioned before that you've got what I call traditional printing, the standard printing that you get from an application. You have to have installed the printer driver uh, for that to work. And depending on the security of a printer, you may need to authenticate to access that printer when you print to it. But something you can do is cache your credentials so you don't get asked every time that you print to that. So let's just have a look at that. So I'm in Word here. Let me just go to File, Print. And you can see here in my printers, the top two there are the ones that I've got for iPrint. Uh, installed. So let's just print to the walk-up print queue. And there we go, you can see that's been successfully submitted uh, to the walk-up printer. The next printing method I want to show you is what we call iPrint Lite. It's effectively a context menu based printing from the Windows File Explorer. But the great thing about this is that you do not need to install a printer driver in order to print. So it's very easy to print to a printer that you don't often print to. And unlike traditional printing, you don't need to open the document when you print it. So let's just have a look at that. So here, if I just select document to print, I can right click on it. And I've got the option here for iPrint. So let me just select that. I can do a drop down and select the printer from there. But in this case, I want to print to the walk up queue. So I'll log in. Obviously, when I print to a walk up queue, it needs to know who I am. So when I want to release my print jobs, it knows which print jobs are mine. So in this instance, I'll just log in here. And let's just select the walk up queue. And I can just print that from here. And there we go. You can see that's been successfully printed. And there is the client just notifying me of that as well. The next way of printing I want to go through is email printing. So this again is very easy for the end user. All they need to do is send an email to a printer email address and every printer can have their own email address. That just picks up the mail message through POP or IMAP. So iPrint will pick up the attachment and send that to be printed. Again, there's no need for a printer driver to be installed. So very easy for the end user. Let's just have a look at that. So I'll just send an email to the printer. And this is using Microfocus GroupWise, which is our email package. So here I'll just send that to HP LaserJet and just add the attachment that I want to be printed. So let's just take uh, this spreadsheet here and I can send that. And you can see there, I've just got an email back just telling me that that has been successfully printed. So the next method of printing I want 
talk about is quick printing. Uh, this again is driverless printing. There's no need to install a printer driver on the workstation and is just a print mechanism that we have through a browser page. So all you need to do is just go to a particular web page. You can drag and drop or browse for the file that you want to be printed, set your print options and then submit that to be printed. So very easy to do, especially for if you've got visitors coming into the office who want to print something, they don't necessarily want to install your printer drivers on their workstation. And indeed, most probably uh, if the file is too big, they can't email it to you either for you to print. So here you can just point them to a web page. They drag and drop the document up and print that. Let's just have a look at that. So in this instance, I'm going to print to the walk up coon. I've already authenticated there. Uh, these settings of what can be done are being pulled from the printer itself. So it knows what options to give. Let's just choose a file here and let's just take uh, that file there. And I can just say print. So that's now printed that to the walk up queue. Very easy to do. The next thing I want to talk about is mobile printing. This allows you to print through iPrint from your mobile devices. And we have apps for Android and iOS devices, and you can just download those from the appropriate store. When you print, you can select the printer from a drop down, or something that's quite nice is, especially if you've got lots of printers and it can get a bit confusing, is just put a QR code on the side of a printer and when you're selecting your printer you can just point your mobile device at that QR code and it will automatically select it. Let's just look at this in action and from here if I want to print I can just select the option to print in another app and here I've got the option for iPrint so I can just select that you can see that pops up. I can select which printer I want to print to. And you notice here I can scan using the QR code if I wanted to. In this case, I will just select the walk up queue, say print. And there we go, that's submitted the print job. One other option that you've got is to use the appliance to advertise printers as AirPrint printers. So AirPrint is a protocol that is used by Apple. So you can print to AirPrint from Macs, from iPhones, from iPads. The only thing there is the printer itself needs to support AirPrint. We won't add AirPrint capabilities to a printer if it doesn't already support it. Finally, what I want to talk about is how we actually release a print job from a walk-up queue. You've seen me submit a few print jobs today through a number of mechanisms to that walk-up queue, and they're all sitting there until I release them to a specific printer, or they can be deleted after a specified period of time. By default, I think that's four hours. There are a number of benefits to using walk-up printing. First of all, that big stack of uncollected paper next to the printer doesn't exist anymore. The other thing is, of course, is security. You know, I've certainly in a number of times I've gone up to printers and found print jobs sitting in the tray that maybe I shouldn't be seeing. And so in this way, you know that the user is by the printer waiting to pick up the print job when it prints. Print jobs can be released using a number of methods. The one that we use in-house is with card release. So I can use my security card, the same card that I use to open the doors in the building to put that down on the card reader by a printer and my print job will come out there. We can use a mobile phone. I can select which print job I want to print and which printer I want to print it to. And again, I can select that using that QR code. And finally, we do have a web-based release portal where users can just release print jobs to a specific printer so let's have a look at some of these options. First of all, let's have a look at the web-based release portal. Here, I need to authenticate. 
because obviously it needs to know who I am to show me the print jobs that I have submitted. So you can see a few print jobs there. If I want to print a particular print job, I can select the option to print. Select the printer from the drop down. And just print that one particular job. And that's been successfully printed. And there you can see my client has just picked that up as well and telling me that that has been submitted. OK. The next thing I want to show you was releasing print jobs through the mobile app. So in this case, I'll just show you that on my iPhone. So on the left hand side here, I've got my print jobs. I'm looking at the web based release portal so we can just see the print jobs there. If I just go into the iPrint app here. I can see those print jobs waiting to be released. And let's just select the top one to release. So here I can select the option to print. And I can just select the printer from here. Or what I can do is just select QR code and here. Here I can just point at the QR code, but you can see that that picked that up. And in a moment, there goes that particular print job out of my queue. And let me just refresh this side and you'll see that it's gone from there as well. The nice thing about the phone release is that I can use that with the desktop licenses. I don't have to have a mobile license in order to use my mobile phone to release print jobs. So the final way I wanted to show you releasing print jobs was using the smart card. Let's just uh, take the camera option here so you can see that happening. You can see here I've got my door pass to the office. Oh, that's just telling me that the last print job has been submitted successfully. And here, all I need to do is put that down on the card reader. And that will release those print jobs for me. Let's just do a refresh and you'll see you, that those two jobs have been submitted. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you've learned a little bit about iPrint and the capabilities that we've got. Thank you for listening.